Hey everyone, um, just hopping on live really quickly because um, I've been thinking a lot about new grad training programs and um, onboarding programs and all of the things that goes with having a new grad. And, you know, defining a new grad as someone who's been out of school for a year or less. Um, yeah, it's kind of personal because I started my career, you know, I spent doing math in my head isn't my strong suit, what, 18 years in academia, you know, school, university, postgraduate, um, and then I went to get a job, and um, I didn't really have a clue what I was doing, and, um, you know, I did an internship where I was kind of okay, you know, I didn't, I kind of spent more time looking up what car I wanted to buy, um, than anything else and then I started my first sort of real job after school and I was not frankly I don't they didn't like me that much my boss you know um kept me on a short-term contract that she just kept renewing even though they had permanent roles available she didn't offer them to me um and I was trying but I didn't really know what I was doing and the advice I was getting from the manager I had at the time was things like you need to be more confident when you talk to me I didn't know like I didn't know what that meant I didn't know how to do that I didn't know why that mattered so what it did is you know I kind of just didn't feel comfortable asking her questions and I didn't feel comfortable admitting when I didn't really know what was going on so anyways I was narrated very well let's put it that way and then fast forward about a year later, a permanent role came up with another manager doing the exact same role, at the exact same company. I applied for it. I got the job. And then things turned around. This manager was the best mentor to this day that I've ever had in my career. She knows who she is, Marilyn. Um, you know, I'm still in touch with her to this day to ask her advice. She, um, you know, and I went from being someone who they didn't even want as a permanent employee to... Um, you know, one of their high potentials to fast forward a net again a couple years later. And when I resigned, I had to meet with the CEO of this billion dollar company because I was one of the high potentials to explain, you know, why I've decided to leave and, and all that. So, and let me be clear, I'm, I'm good at what I do, but, and I, I did work very hard to turn that around and I paid for all my own training and coaching and all those things. But the number one difference was that manager, um, yeah, so it's kind of, you know, when I talk to companies about their fresh grads, when I talk to them about their more junior employees, and they say things like, ah, oh, they're just not really getting it. I'm like, mm hmm yeah, like, of course they're not getting it. <laughs> Why would they get it? Why would they get it? Um, and so it's, you know, it feels quite personal to me. You, just personally, because of my own story and how, you know, I hated going into work like I would cry I would cry I mean I'm a crier at the best of times but I would cry on Sunday nights knowing I had to go back into a job on Monday that I didn't feel confident in that my boss thought I was useless like it was it was really hard and it talk about screwing with what little confidence I had um so that's why it feels really personal for me because I was the grad that no one really thought was going to do anything. And then, you know, if just a few short years later, I left the organization as their top, you know, a top high potential. And um, and I had to meet with all sorts of VPs and the president to explain my rationale for leaving and to see what they could do to keep me and all that sort of stuff. And that's, again, I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of a well done me. But it, but it truly was reflecting on the manager I had and how much she mentored and coached and um, and trained me and, and had patience with me for not having a clue. Like, I didn't. I will admit that. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Um, and she understood that and taught me and had patience and all those great things. So that's kind of just why I'm talking about... Oh, hey, Guy. Um, That's kind of why I'm talking about that at the moment, talking a lot about grad programs, because... We just, we do such a disservice when we say things like they don't have a clue or, oh my God, they're signing off their emails by saying laters. Of course they are, because they've been doing that for 18 years and it's never been a problem. Like we do, we do such a disservice to that individual and to our businesses. Like this is a huge source of amazing talent um, that we're just missing out on. That A, they're just not bringing their best and B, they're probably quitting before they're actually you know, up and contributing. So just a little snippet today about why I really want you to think about your grad programs and how you treat your grads, how you train your grads, um, 
and just what you do to to help them get up to speed because it ain't easy and if you exercise that empathy muscle for a minute, you'll remember it wasn't easy for you either. Um, anyways, hope that helped, gave a little bit of insight into why this is something that I'm gonna be talking about for the next couple weeks and why you should be thinking about it a lot for your business and your team too. Uh, any questions, drop them in um, and I'll be happy to comment uh, on anything that you have going on for your workplace, okay? Cheers.